21 days into the year. Isn't that wonderful? You want to celebrate? And what 21 days of newness, something very uniquely new, is breaking out in our midst. Let me make a, a couple of acknowledgements. Before I make the acknowledgement, it's just to let you know that sacrifice is the proof of faith. Sacrifice is a proof of faith. If you believe it, you pay a price for it. There is no faith that can make sense that is not revealed in sacrifice. Two things the Holy Spirit just whispered to me as I sat there today. Before I came up here, the Holy Spirit said I should mention to you two things you must store in your spirit. And store in your heart and in your soul as you go through this season. Two things that sacrifice brings about as revealed in the scripture. Number one, sacrifice brings about open heaven. Open heaven of extraordinary help. open heaven of extraordinary help. 1 Kings chapter 3 If you go to maybe about the 10th verse of it go back to verse 7 the 7th verse okay maybe verse 5 At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. Okay, so let's run from the first verse so that we can have a context. We're trying to... Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And verse 2. The scripture is talking about the beginning of Solomon. The first thing he did is he made treaty. Kings relate with kings. Kingdoms relate with kingdom. And kingdoms contend against kingdom. Pay attention to that. So kings don't relate with the common. When the king of Saudi Arabia comes to Nigeria, he's not coming to meet you. He's coming to meet the democratic king of Nigeria. He's coming to meet Ahmed Tinubu. When the governor of Zamfara, Zamfara comes to Akwaibom State, it's not going to come to your house. It's coming to government house to meet the governor of the state. So this is the first thing that happens. Pay attention to that because we shall soon return to the issue of kings and kings. Kingdoms against kingdom. Meanwhile, the people sacrificed at high places. There was no proper place of celebration, of celebrating God, of honoring God. Which is why we have verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of his father, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Offering sacrifice, but not at the, the properly, perfectly acceptable place unto God. Next verse, verse 4. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. Let's see a couple of things about Gibeon. For that was the great high place. This is still about the beginning of Solomon. This is the third chapter of the first book of Kings. But the first chapter of the book of Kings, the story of David is fading out by chapter 2. Another person is coming up. And by chapter 3, we are beginning to see the mind, the constitution of the person who is coming at the beginning. So pay attention to beginnings. Beginnings are usually the prophecy, the future. Don't ignore the beginning. Of course, you know I use moments like this to give information to everyone. We are a family church. 
We are a church that is very, very family centric, centered around the family of God and the family of humanity and the human family. If you are in a relationship with anybody, you are entering into a relationship, pay attention to the beginning. Everything in the future is revealed in the very first beginning. Just that you don't pay attention. Because perhaps your mind is not focused. If you are entering into a business deal, meeting somebody for business, don't be carried away by platitudes, by pleasantries, by beautiful lunches and dinners. Pay attention to the beginning. The beginning tells you something about the future. Pay attention to your beginning. The beginning of the year like this. Pay attention. If you lose at the beginning, you will spend the rest of the year trying to correct. If you derail at the beginning, if you miss the beginning, the rest will be a game of catching up. So the enemy attacks the beginning. Wise people pay attention to the beginning. My mother used to say a saying of my people, Akpai talk, and you don't talk. Have you heard it before? Your mother told you also. <laughs> Few words that I remember about my mother, and they were very strategic words. Akpai talk. How did our people know these things? They knew they were close to life and nature. They didn't have smartphones distracting them. They have the sun informing them. They had the, the moon and the stars in the night guiding them. They had the flow, the ebbing and the flowing of tide of the river to predict seasons. They used their senses. These days, humanity is losing natural senses because things are thinking for us. Our smartphones and devices, they are thinking for us. Samsung has just launched Galaxy AI. And it's wonderful. That is setting a new race for the AI, AI to come into pockets. That also means people will be less smarter. It means human beings will be less creative. The creative ones will be those who program the AI. The rest will be consumers who no longer have ability to create and think. So I try as much as possible to pay attention to nature and to the spirit of God. Nature is not a mistake. So now the king went to Gibeon. That was the highest place, the great high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. Of course you know. We had, we had shared something on this. I've been preaching on this force forever. And it's likely I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. There's always something to be taken from it. And this was at the beginning of his reign. So he went and offered sacrifice. Not just anywhere. At the great high place. It was the statement like, nowhere is good enough for me to serve God. But I choose the best. And you know in GFC we place God first. And then he positions us for his best. Choosing God's first means going for the greatest. The best that is available among the, the resources, the opportunities, and the places of men. This is what happens in the beginning. Next verse. I give you on the next verse after that sacrifice is an open heaven. Immediately after that burnt sacrifice, that burnt offering, heaven opened. Every time people engage God in sacrifice, paying the price, letting go pleasures, letting go their own, letting go in such a way that it hurts them and leaves a mark on them, the next thing is open heaven. 
open heaven is not achieved through prayers it's not achieved through even hearing the word of God after you hear the word of God the word of God will instruct you to make sacrifice and it brings about open heaven last year was a very poor year for us a year that poverty was very strong in this community and I trust God that cannot repeat how do I know sacrifice was so minimal a lot of people refused to make sacrifices to hear the word of God to show up in church to conserve in order to run from the hardship of life they ran from God to make themselves convenient so if you will check last year was a very poor year for many of you you were poor desperately begging the reason is because people held back from sacrificing I kept encouraging young people trek no matter the age you are walking is good for you sometimes walking is the best exercise it will cost you something any any kind of inspiration or idea that makes you feel that going to the presence of God to hear the word and to stir his spirit in a community is a problem that you solve by retreating from God that is a bondage and covenant of poverty and get ready you will be poor you will be poor in so far as it depends on God you may be rich in so far as it depends on you begging human beings begging people in the office to give you your rights begging authorities to release what belongs to you begging demons in assignment offering them goods to let your children go so anything you have will come through begging begging humans and when you beg humans when they give you they leave you poor forever have you ever seen any beggar who is rich even if that beggar has a nation as his personal property, he remains a beggar and poor. He cannot come and tell you, I have a house. Because if he tells you, you have, he has a house, he will not give him again. I have one beggar from my community. Very wealthy man. I sent children to the, to the to university. When I used to travel through Calabar Airport, it was a regular sir. When I see him, when he meets me, he ceases to be a beggar. We talk family, we talk. He's deformed. We knew him in the village. But once I walk away, he resumes to begging. When we talk, he will talk to me about his wife, his children, how his children are growing, doing very well. But nobody knows. He's a beggar. And you cannot treat him differently. So begging from men, begging with, from, with bodies, with your bodies, with whatever, to beg for authorities to help you, whether in politics or in any way, it makes you poor. Sickness cannot recognize what you have. Nothing takes you seriously. So anything that tells you, oh, I cannot make sacrifice to hear God. I cannot make sacrifice to worship God. I cannot show my poverty before God, my emptiness before God, and let me hide it. You know, I heard it from my community and my people of my community, they knew church, but they didn't know, they didn't know the word of God. So, what I heard from, you know, when, Moon Yegafong, see, ya ya uka ofa obasi. If you don't have a beautiful dress, you don't go to church. So will I go to church and show myself like this? They go to the market and show themselves like that. I think you are from my community, many of you. So I will just trek and I'll just look like this. Or I will not even have offering to give. So in my community, when people did not have offering to give, they did not go to church. So I will not sit down. People will just see that. Oh, what on the I mean I can. So, the theology and the philosophy of my community, and not my community today, my community in the 70s that I, my eyes were open to see. The community is a, is a lifestyle of death. Because you avoid his presence, because you don't want to make any sacrifice, death takes advantage of you. Diseases take advantage of you. Mishaps take advantage of you. Calamities, they, they prey on you. So, this year... 
when God spoke to me last year that there will be wealth this year, I told you before we came into this year, one thing that is present, a spirit that is beginning to operate in this family, more and more people are opening up for sacrifice. I don't care the, about the economy and whatever it is in the human level of life. By the end of this year, you will know you have entered into a different year. By the end of this, if you embrace, if you embrace sacrifice, open heaven. And when heaven is opened, God does not talk about your need. He said, tell me, what do you want me to do? Want means want. Ask me. What shall I give you? He didn't say, what, what, what is your pain? What is your need? Need is particular. What shall I give you? That means if you even ask for vanity, it will give you. Means, if you ask for a very big car, because you made sacrifice to a very big house. If you ask that my children will be, will store in the best of, you know, that's not like a need, but it is, it is a desire. So when heaven is opened, your life grows beyond your immediate need. And sacrifice opens the heaven. Say sacrifice. Come on, come on, come on. Are you against me? Am I telling you lies? I'm discussing the Bible. Say sacrifice. Intentional sacrifice. Not just sacrifice, but intentional sacrifice opens the heaven number two thing I didn't come to teach on sacrifice sincerely but the Holy Spirit just whispered to me I'm a, a vessel I don't have a plan so at every point every second you listen anything can come up anything can change sacrifice does another thing sacrifice stops plagues destruction so when somebody has when there is an open door because of evil please write down something tell somebody write down something look at him, look at him. when an open door for evil has been created by human mistakes by human failures sacrifice stops the waste and the destruction the last moment of David in his active duty as a king, he made a mistake. And that mistake is about human arrogance. He began to, dis to display his strength as a king. To show his dependence. To show his dependence on the number of his army. So he took a census of his fighters. People will begin to ask, why will God punish David, and when God punishes a king, the entire nation is in trouble. That's why we have to be careful with who is on top of us, whether in the office, in politics, in the university, in church, in church, in church, in church. Whoever is on top of us will bring consequences upon us. So, in the moments of David's foolishness, counting his soldiers and he felt confident on account of his number he was no longer talking about his dependence on the Lord the David who wrote the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want is now the David that wants to know how many fighters he has and pluck the anger of God broke out to stop it to stop it the very last chapter of 2nd Samuel. Chapter 24. And verse. Verse 18. Chapter 24 and verse 18. And God came that day to David. And said to him go up. Erect an altar to the Lord. On the threshing floor. Of around the Jebusites. So David, according to the word of God, when you hear of altar, God was telling him, go and sacrifice at the, the place of that Jebusite. He told him, go and make sacrifice. 
go and make an offering. Go and pay a price. And David understood it. And you will see the deception. Are you following me, please? Please, I'm begging you. Um, please follow me. Because I'm begging you, please do. Because the Holy Spirit will not whisper something to my heart without having you in mind. So follow me. Please follow me. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. I cast out the spirit of foolishness. Lift up your two hands. In the name of Jesus, I cast out the spirit of indifference. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say it like it is being cast out from you. Amen. The spirit of complacency that makes you feel I rebuke that spirit and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is by hearing that faith comes and hearing the word of God. And the scripture says anything that you do and not by faith is a sin. So you need faith. The only reason I need you in church is so that you believe. And by believing, you have the result of God. Lift up your two hands say, I'm free, I'm free. to hear, free. to receive, free. to prosper, free. to overflow free. abundantly, free. endlessly. You are not saying like you mean it. You are not saying like a, post, a pastor you. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive. I engage. I prosper. And I overflow. I run over. I take over. I rule over. When is it beginning? When, which year will it start? Which month will it start? Which week will it start? Which day will he start? Which hour will he start? Which minute will he start? Tell me the second this will come to pass. Glory to God. You want to clap? Go ahead. Be seated. Be seated. So David, according to the word of God, according to the word of God, okay, it was God that went, the prophet God, not God, went up as the Lord commanded him. It was God, the prophet, that commanded. Go back to that verse 18. Verse 18, please. And God, God came that day to David and said to him, God, the prophet, somebody sent by God, a messenger like I'm sent by God as a messenger to you. Go up, erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of around the Jebusite. Go up. Go up. The prophet said, go up. This is how to end this plague. The plague, the affliction that is killing health, killing finances, killing marriages, killing prospects, killing businesses, killing promotions, and killing future. This plague, because of an open door, go, specific, do this, do this, do this. So David, according to the word of God, say, say it with me. So David, I didn't hear everyone say, so David, so means consequently, as a result of what God said, David went. That is obedience. Immediate obedience. So many families that are plagued. So many destinies that are plagued year after year, year after year. They beg people. They are very good with complaining and letting people know for how long they have been in this place. How hopeless and helpless they are. They attract people's pity. But they don't care to hear from God. How to shut the door. How to end the plague. That's a problem. That's why I say last year was the year of unimaginable poverty for people around that I could see. I just felt pity and just wish I could do something. I couldn't do anything. Because as you say, people don't even hear you. They, don't even, they are not available to hear. And those who just sit down, they just sit down. They don't hear God. They hear their pain. They hear the new price of fear. They hear this and hear that. And so whatever you say, just is nonsensical. Including ministers. In a church, if you have to beg ministers to come and sit down and hear the word of God, it's misfortune. So last year was not a very beautiful year. Yeah, 
I'm just showing you the photograph that I snapped last year. I had a lot of agony in me. He said, how will I with the passion of God in my heart claim to pastor a people without passion, without knowledge of God, without interest in God? Who will save them? If the God I preach cannot save, where else is salvation? Sacrifice opens heaven. Say it. Say sacrifice opens heaven. Say my sacrifice will open my heaven. And my sacrifice will end the plague, the affliction, the destruction, the devouring. So David, according, in response immediately to the word of God, went up as the Lord. Look at, it was God that said it, but he went according to the word of the Lord. By a prophet, through a prophet, Israel was what? Those of you with mobile phone, swear to God, if it were permitted, that it is Bible you are looking at. Because if it is something else you are looking at, you have problem. And I'm not sure it can be solved. So these days that people don't carry Bible to church and they carry phones that they don't even have enough credits or data. And I'm talking, let it just be that it is the Bible you are looking at. And you are studying. If it is something else, you have a problem that may not have a solution. Because the only solution to a human problem is God and His Word, or through His Word. So if you don't have that one, that means there is no other way. The scripture says, For there is no other name given unto men by which they will be. So I'm speaking scripture, it's not a curse I'm describing. Okay, so according to the word of God, went up as the Lord commanded. Next verse. Now Araona looked and saw the king and his servants coming toward him. This is a man. God is, said, go there. I don't know why God will have chosen there. I've not done stories on that. Why will God send to that place? The Gibeonites to Gibeon. Remember the story of the Gibeonites. And to a particular person of the Jebu side. So there, there are a lot of things mixed up there. But I was not sent to teach on that. So I will not investigate. Let's leave that. Let's just focus on the fact. This man feeling unworthy and so privileged. That the king will come his direction. In the time of national calam calamity. So Arana went out and bowed before the king. With his face to the ground. But David was not there for obeisance. He was not there for reverence. He was not there for any royal attention. He was there on a mission. Then around us said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor. He didn't say, So that you donate it. He didn't say, I need the threshing floor. He was asked, go and build an altar. That means go and sacrifice. So I'm not coming to take as the king. He could say, I need that land and that's all. What do you need the land so, uh, for my king? To make sacrifice unto God. Oh, it's such a blessing. It is my own. Use it. David said, I want to buy. Say, I want to buy. Come on, come on. Say, I want to pay the price. Because God said so. God will not ask a man to make sacrifice, to build an altar, if God does not have a mystery of communication and transaction that comes through the altar. That means there are certain diseases, there are certain issues, there are certain troubles in life that will never go away until somebody, first of all, understands the mystery of sacrifice and accepts and embraces it willingly, not unwillingly. Let it sink. Let it sink. Turn to somebody to your left, to your right. Say, are you listening? Because we'll feel church like we do. And we walk away like we have never heard the word of God. No results to show. No results to show. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. He said, to buy the threshing floor from you. To build What? God said, go and build the altar. Why, so do, why don't you just go 
and say, okay, I want to build an altar. We are there. Okay, go ahead, my king. He said, I want to first of all do what? Buy. That means I want to sacrifice. I want to buy. That the plague. Come on, read the last pass, the part with me. Start from the, that, everyone. That the plague. Find out what plague is. We just had coronavirus. And people are still wearing masks in some parts of the world. That was a plague. Plague is something that comes massively and afflicts almost generally. Leaves no one. Everyone is affected. Plague is massive. It's an invasion of destruction at a massive level. When your family is plagued, when your health is plagued, you move from having problem with your eyes, the next moment is your ear. And you are being treated for your ear, the next moment is your ankle. And when they are trying to bandage the ankle, your hand can no longer touch your toes. And the doctor just said, we don't even understand the meaning of this. That is a plague. Your wife is down. And you hear that your son in, in school fell from, they were playing and fell and broke his neck. And we, it's an emergency situation. He said, but I'm taking care of the mother. He said, please, sir, if you don't come early to take a decision about this, it may be too late. And while that is happening, somebody serves you with a notice, quit notice. Am I speaking familiar language? Yes. If you have not been through it, God forbid, you have heard people talk about it. And so it reaches the point you see a man sit down and stares into a blank space, does not know what to think. It is a plague. It comes invading, leaving you with no option. If you turn this way, there's something popping up. Fear from outside, dread from within. That is when to buy, to make sacrifice. That is when to run to him sacrificially. That is when to do what? Run to him. How? Sacrificially. I will forever honor my, my father and honor his, the memory of him. Talking about the origin of my call and my priesthood was founded, I've shared this with you, was founded on extraordinary sacrifice of a man. That for nine days, for nine consecutive months, in the Catholic Church, if you know about Novena, Novena is nine days of prayer without break. And in the sacred heart of Jesus, for those who have been Catholic, like the high point of Catholic devotion, Devotion to the loving heart of Jesus, to the good heart of Jesus, begging his mercy from his heart. For Catholics will understand that. And a condition for one to secure certain, certain answer, according to that devotion, is making nine days novena without break in a month and for nine months consecutively without fail. And so my father, I've shared this with you, my father embarked on it. He used to tell us his history. I hope you fathers and mothers to tell your children. I hope you have good history to tell them. If you don't have good history to tell them, tell them why you failed. So that they learn from it. Please talk to your children. Don't hide the reason why your life is the way it is. So that their own will not be like that. That's what you owe. I'm so surprised this is what I'm talking about this morning. Because... <laughs> A message is already there, but as I sat down, the Holy Spirit just told me, tell them about the power of sacrifice, what it does. Open heaven. Have you seen the open heaven with Solomon? If you have seen the open heaven with Solomon, can I see your hand? When we looked at First King chapter 3, did you see open heaven? God came and said, ask me. So when you tap into the power of sacrifice, God is the one to ask you, ask. When you don't sacrifice, you are begging. Okay. Now look at this. He said, why has my Lord the king come? Oh, I have come to buy 
threshing floor from you to build an altar to the Lord that the plague shouted later, shouted louder that rise to your feet. Sorry, please. Respectfully, I ask you, rise to your feet. Very respectfully. Read from that, the very last, the last part of it. Say that. I didn't hear you. Everyone, go. You can say so that, so that it makes sense to you. Say so that they play. One, two, go. That means what is at stake here is stopping the plague. But the means of stopping the plague, sacrifice. God did not send him to build an altar for the sake of it. So sacrifice is not for the sake of sacrifice. I don't fast for the sake of fasting. I don't give for the sake of giving. You don't fast to like a Pharisee to show others that you are better. That you are anointed, you are consecrated. That is called spiritual vanity. And the scripture says you have already received your reward. So fa fasting is not to show off to your mates, to people around you. You see, in our church, we fast. You people fast for 21 days, we fast for 40 days. And others will say we fast for 50 years. Depending on the spirit of God telling our papa, sometimes we fast for 100 days. That's spiritual vanity. It has no value. There is a purpose. Fasting is not fasting for itself. Even those who depend on fasting to lose weight, they are not fasting for pleasure. They fast to lose weight. Fasting has health benefits. So people, they are now talking in the world of medicine about intermittent fast. To correct certain things, even to cure cancer. So it's not for nothing. If there is a purpose, the plague in the spiritual level, either open heaven or what? The plague. Lift up your two hands. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the way, let me announce to you, today we are beginning spiritual warfare. The rest of the Sundays of this season, until we get to our anniversary, we are confronting things you have been avoiding. So in the anointing and communion, get ready to war. As you rise from midnight in the prayer belt, anytime you rise, just know that apart from all the intentions you are praying, you, we can no longer sit down and watch our rights taken from us. You can no longer watch and see years counted and you have no result to count. Kingdom suffers God violence and violence is war. To rule, you must fight. This is a commonwealth of champions. The least amongst us is mighty. That's why we have mighty men, prevailing men, prevailing women. Look at that scripture. Read the last part of it. So that everyone go. The plague may be what? Withdrawn. That means the plague was permitted. No plague, nothing that you go through in life is an accident. We are constantly having an accident. Anytime you want to rise, something happens and settles you down. And you, are, you stand before somebody who should recognize you and facilitate your moving to the next level. But the person just looks like he does not recognize you. And the person greets you generally. It is permitted. It is not the plan of God. So how do you withdraw it? How do, you, how do you get that withdrawn from you? How do you rebuke the devourer? Is it through tithes? How do you rebuke insufficiency? Is it through first fruit offering? These are sacrifices to trigger certain things and to withdraw certain things. Lift up your two hands. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, this year, I am no longer sitting with my legs crossed. I am no longer sitting in lamentation wishing the plagues to go. I am getting the plagues out of my life by intentional sacrifice. Pray that prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive instruction directly from you. 
instruction directly. David went according to the word of the Lord. I don't want to go according to the word of Patrick. I want to go according to the word of the Lord. Say, Lord, speak to me personally. Speak to me personally. Speak to me personally. Give me personal understanding. This week, by the command of God in His Spirit, I end the plague in your life using your intentional sacrifice of any level in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, the plague can no longer plague me. Say, my heaven can no longer remain closed. Say, I can no longer live the life of begging others for life. Open your mouth and speak it. I will not beg my boss for my right. My children will not give their bodies to lecturers for their marks. My sons will not be initiated into, into secret court for security. Open your mouth and make declaration. I'm no longer spending my life, my nights in the hospital. Day and night living in the hospital. I am no longer spending my life in legal case. Unnecessary legal tussles. This year, the plague must end. I declare war against plague. Raise your voice. Say, I declare war against plagues in my life. I declare war against plagues in my life. I declare war against close heaven in my life. I can no longer walk under close heaven. I can no longer toil under heaven is that is like brass i receive the grace of intentional sacrifice in the name of jesus christ can i hear your amen like fire amazing be seated i just trust god that there is something god wants to achieve in this house today because when he changes the message, I know he has changes, he has changed dispensation. Sincerely, I'm a prophet by calling. My only strength is in the word in my mouth. It is by the word I heal. It's by the word I guide. And you know, I don't have the habit of coming to pray for you here. I give you words to pray. If you come to me in the office, you may have issues of 100 years. I may not pray for you up to 30 seconds. I don't have a burden to pray for people. I have a word of instruction and declaration. So I'm declaring war. I don't know if you can join me to declare war against your plagues. Because God told me, enough of waiting and looking at church as church, a place where you come to talk nonsense, think nonsense, and compare nonsense, compare, oh, for about the church we used to be, um, where we are coming from, oh, this is not how they do it. So you sit down here and you compare ministers, the way they pray here, the songs, is now, now, and you just sit down, and you don't see the one who is real. So I don't do church. If I was called to do church, I would not leave Catholic priesthood. I'm called into something deeper that needs you to be free to engage it. Today, if you agree with me, I, I declare war over your plague. I cannot declare this war over your plague without your cooperation. So it's not something that a prophet comes to do for you. It's what a prophet comes to inspire you to do. Elisha had to put his hand upon the hand of the king of Israel for the arrow 
to become victory. Any willing hand ready for the war through the altar of sacrifice that this season of fast is not a season of pain and shame but it's a season of staring that this season of giving for the gospel is not a season of shame but it's a season of staring and rebuking the, the plague I put my hand upon such a one with understanding I declare plagues end now in the name of Jesus I don't know what plagues you are under I'm speaking whatever is the plague and if you don't even know the plague then you can say whatever is the plague in my life I'm not aware of I declare war say I declare war say I'm no longer watching to see plagues I am no longer allowing plagues to plague me I am no longer allowing waste to waste me I am not sitting wishing for help Say, I build the altar of sacrifice and the plague must end. Say, this year, you plague in my life. In case you know any particular plague, something that has invaded your life and overwhelmed your life. The plague over your wife, your wife's health. The plague that denies you the pleasure of a husband and the pleasure of a wife. The plague that denies you of the usefulness of, usefulness of your qualification and certification. This year, from today, we are ending the plague. We are ending the plague. We are ending the plague. Declare war. Say my fasting, my fasting is war. My sowing is war. I am fighting and ending the plague. And I'm receiving open heaven. Jesus Christ. Be seated. Look at that scripture, the next verse. Be seated, please. Thank you. Then around, then around us said to David, let my Lord the King take an offer of whatever seems good to him. Take it. Free gift. So a lot of people will be, will be very happy if we have to bring a bus to your house, take you, give you breakfast at the entrance. Give you a free Bible. And when you are done, give you free lunch. That's what is happening in Europe now. In America. You have to have lunch. Have breakfast. Have discotheque. I went to Italy. In a church, there is a discotheque for young people. All that to keep them. It's no longer the gospel. It's no longer the word of God that is keeping them. So when ministers go on early at the beginning of the year, there is a lot of mini, a lot of mini conferences for ministers and church leaders. Sometimes nobody talks about the power of God. It's about techniques, using social media, using this. At the end of it, a hundred million people follow you and they don't have value because it is just a hype. You bring people in church and they are in prison with human words. And offered spiritual platitudes. What sounds good, but offers no hope beyond this moment. There are, there are certain good things in those things, but that's not how Jesus began the movement. So when the Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. And you shall be my witnesses. A demonstration, a proof. I want a school of ministry. I want gathering of men. Who will not just tell me about how they made it to this point. But they will, they will tell me the raw power of God. Lead me into the mystery. And spare me of your testimony. And spare me of techniques. 
and human words. This is what this season is looking for. Sacrifice. This is how families are going to be redeemed. The missionaries who braved the horrible nature of Africa died in their droves and then sustained the gospel. They made sacrifices. Their poor brothers and sisters sent the money from different nations. They didn't get money from our people. They made sacrifices. And now we have churches everywhere, but we don't have Christians because there are no sacrifices. Ministers want shortcut. And you can say, the God of my papa, so. The God who has walked in the mantle of my papa, so. How did your papa, so, get that mantle? So people look for alignment. Where to belong in terms of I submit to where and where. As a spiritual cultism to get the name of that person for endorsement. That's not how Jesus, that's not what Jesus Christ said. We, he said, you shall receive power when the spirit does what? Comes upon. And then, so you have to personally receive power. Not the power of your papa in the Lord. I have no anointing to give to a man. I have a way of anointing to give to a man. Sacrifice unto God in personal relationship. That's how we are going to end place. That's how we we'll rise, raise mighty people from ordinary people. Not by running away from engaging God sacrificially and withdrawing to the life of convenience. The church is dying of convenience. And people are changing doctrine. The Roman Catholic Church is facing crisis because the highest authority is saying that we can bless the homosexuals and lesbians. Bless them so that they have a sense that they are loved by God. Who told you you need the official blessing of the church to recognize a man marrying a man or a woman marrying a woman for God to love you? God loves all of us, but he has given us a teaching to redeem the world. We cannot love them for God or love them more than God. Love comes from God, but he has given us the way. Jesus Christ came as the way. So a lot of things are shifting everywhere and the church is dying. And this is a time of sacrifice. This is a time when the church has to rise and sacrifice so that there will be open heaven of grace. Look at that scripture. It says, it says, offer up whatever seems good to you. And here are oxen. He has, he has offered a land free. He has offered animals free. That's the church of today. The church where people start with welfare. And so when people come, they are given food and welfare. Hoping they will stay. What are they staying for? This is the time. That sacrifice should open the door. That somebody walks into the church and is arrested by the presence of God. And without any human help, knows that my help shall come from the Lord. I have found the Lord there. Comes from sacrifice. Not welfare department. I don't have any problem with welfare. We have the 8th and the 24th for welfare. But there is no welfare department. We are the department. All of us. All of us. Rise. Raise your hand. Say in the name of Jesus. This battle must be won by me. The battle against plague. Say you plague over my life. In whatever way. Plague over those who are connected to me. Plague of my neighborhood. I declare war in the name of Jesus of Jesus Christ. Be seated. Declare war in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare war in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a time to show holy anger about what is going on in the church, in the body of Christ. This is a time to show holy anger and refuse to compromise and look good and be acceptable. That's the work of prophets. To annoy people for God to, to be heard. When you begin to placate people and make people comfortable, you offend the eternal order of God. A 
He said, I give you all threshing implements and the yokes of the oxen for wood. I give you everything because you are king and I'm privileged you have come to my place. See what David said. See what David said. Give me that. Then the king said to Arauna, everyone go. No. It starts with what? No. No to free life. No to easy life. People want to marry, but they don't want to pay the price of purity. That they first of all have to finish the pleasure of fornication. And they have no, no option left. They give about church blessing. Give about church blessing upon, upon the summer. We are in a hurry to, to wed people. So that it will look like things are happening in church. We have testimonies. Four we are blessing marriages. Marriages that have been consecrated on the altar of foolishness, of adultery and fornication and foulness. And then we bring a priest to come and bless them. Bless them means giving official endorsement. So endorse my fornication. Endorse my immorality. And nobody cares the implication. It takes a generation of sacrifice to raise a generation of glory. The reason why Nigeria is like this is because Nigeria is about leaders. Nigeria sacrifices and dies for a couple of crooks who are leaders. But when you have nation that leaders sacrifice for the nation, glory comes. Parents who don't make sacrifice, they raise rabbits as children. It takes sacrifice to raise the destiny of glory. Many of us who are caught up in the battle of, of all sorts of issues is because our parents did not make the right sacrifice. And those who made sacrifice, they made sacrifice unto demons. And the demons are holding our hands everywhere. And you are born again, but you have not yet come into the place of sacrifice. The only thing is that there is grace that saves you. Grace is given free. But to receive grace, you pay the price. Can I tell you something? I have been telling you giving is not the same thing as receiving. I can give you something that does not arrive. I say, what happened? I sent it to you. Check your email. It has not arrived. It's hanging in between. It takes intentionality in paying the price. Okay, let's go to the school. What do lecturers do? Lecturers give knowledge. But just because lecturers come to teach, all the students are knowledgeable. They pass exam. So giving is not receiving. Giving depends on the giver. Receiving depends on the intentionality of the receiver. A student must be disciplined to come early, to sit in Nigerian University where they don't use sound system. So you have to sit where you can hear. That's sacrifice. Showing up early. Rising early. It takes sacrifice to receive. Don't st stop fooling yourself. The people are teaching the people of my generation useless grace doctrine. That Jesus did everything, yes. He did everything and he's free for you. But for that to change your life, you have to pay a price. You have to pay a price. You have to pay a price. This is, I, don't, I didn't know this is what we'll talk about. I just thought, we'll just come and bring scriptures and declare war and fight war. Because as I sat down, just as I was about leaving, God says, Tell them about the power of sacrifice. Two things. Open heaven and ending the plague. The plague that have followed us from the time past will only end when we rise and live a sacrificial life. That you want to marry, you come to a place where you, first of all, you pray and have understanding and revelation. This is my wife. This is my husband. And the two people pray with an accountability of the pastor. And they come to that decision before they take the next steps. It's not first of all sleeping with somebody and finding out whether we can sleep forever. Sleep until when we are 100. 
The way I look at you is like you'll give me pleasure till I die. So let me go and marry. You don't know whether this is a sweet python or a beautiful tiger. And if you really seek God and receive from God, you will not receive uselessness from God. Parents who made mistake in this manner must teach their children and pray for their children. It's sacrifice. Take sacrifice to build a family. I bless God for hearing deliver, save our children from addiction. Ah! Go to schools, including schools that have Christian names and church names. Pornography waste our generation. A mother just came a few days ago. Talk to me about it. School, God forbid, we don't do such. We cannot mention the name of the school. The school of one of the holiest churches on earth. Saying their computer, the children hide pornographic movies. Teachers cannot even decode where they hide. Say, my son is wasting away. It takes more than buying form for schools and having private lit teachers. It takes more than that to raise the people of the future. Who are we raising? Where are we going to? It takes sacrifice of intentionality and awareness. Awareness. To find out who teaches your child. Don't just take a child to a school because that school is trending. It takes sacrifice intentionality. Rise to your feet. Now you are beginning to understand when we talk about declaring war. It's more than telling you bring money. What is money? Money is the least thing you can sacrifice. The real sacrifice is your whole life. Scripture says offer your body as living, your thoughts, your intentionality in marriage and everything. Lift up your two hands. If you are a young person, you have to take a decision today. My marriage will be built upon the altar of sacrifice. As a father, say I may not have started well, but from now, from now. So this, this season of fasting, you fast and pray for children you taught nonsense about marriage. Children you did not give attention to. Ask God, redeem them. I did not know. Raise your voice. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace of sacrifice. And I end the plague in my house, in my family in my generation in the name of Jesus Christ say I refuse a free life be seated Quibom State is a place of free marriage because our culture and custom makes getting married look like buying a private jet so parents use their daughters to make up for their poverty and laziness that they are so poor that they did not make enough resources to be a father. When the daughter wants to marry, that's when they want to build a house, buy a car, do everything. So because of that, you see very beautiful, noble young women who now have to save money to augment in marrying themselves. Because their parents are too poor to have a daughter given in marriage. So the custom and the tradition of uh, our people and our people, the least productive people, the least productive, you go to people and everybody is selling something, making money. So if they spend money making wedding, you don't have anything to say. So a young man just came back from another state. I will have mentioned, I will have said they do. I don't know whether it's permitted. He said the least, the least, I didn't, I didn't expect that. The least is so simple. So he went to the head. Of Ibibio and Yoron, where people use their daughter to rise and be like mates. See, they gave me a list, it's so simple. Go to Northern Crossover, go to Benue, go to those places and see what it takes to marry. And you come here, poor people. Who use witchcraft to hold their daughters. So you see a lot of young women who roam around. And young men who now marry women without marrying. Because they cannot pay the price. They themselves are poor. They are not ready to rise. So they are free marriage. A girl who is tired and donates her body. Donates herself and begins to get pregnant. 
And when the father dies, and then Nobiara Ukaraba for a walk for a soap, you don't ever appear again because they have asked you to come and marry because their father has died and you disappear. Useless culture of free life. Free life. This generation have to start sacrificing. Young men begin life sacrificing. Young women begin life sacrificing. This is the only way to correct the mistakes of our fathers. Of some of us having to marry for our fathers before we come and accept marriage. Say somebody has come for me, but my father did not marry my mother. So now we are planning. Met a young woman there. They had to marry for the grandfather. No, for the grandmother. They marry for the mother. So that the man who has come out will marry her. Before they finish these two levels of marriage, the man has changed his mind. That's what a life without sacrifice offers you. But when you offer yourself as a sacrifice unto God, God will locate you. This year is the year of reward from sacrifice. Rise, rise, rise. I speak over you as God's prophet over this house and for my people as a missionary. In the name of Jesus, I declare war against free life. In the name of Jesus. You will not live a, you will not live a useless free life. A life that costs you nothing. The life that has no value. Have you ever seen anything free? They don't have value. What free thing have you had 10 years ago and it's still good? Real valuable things cost. They have a price. A free marriage has no value. That you cannot afford to pay the price. The free thing. Free thing. Sacrifice. Father, in the name of Jesus, we end the plague. The plague. Plagues in families. Race priests. Race priests. Race priests. Race priests from everyone here. Priests who will stand upon sacrifice. In Jesus' name. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Free. Free. Why do many people go into occult kingdoms? They want free money. He said, when you join us in this confraternity, we settle you with 20 million naira to start. Free 20 million naira, you sell your soul and sell all your children. A young man in the school of the Holy Spirit coming to me, a father who belonged to one of those things, when the father died, the occult kingdom visited and said they should come to their altar to do settlement. The man said, and everybody in the family is our friend, and this young man stays, well, that was my father, he's dead. If you want him, come and take his cups. I'm not coming. And he came and told me, he said, are you afraid? He said, don't be afraid. If they can overthrow my Jesus, tell them to come and feel, kill me first before they kill you. Nonsense. The devil has no power. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. I tell him, go and tell them. Let them, let them. I say, don't go. If they want to kill somebody, let them come and kill me. After they have killed me, then they can come for you. Me? I died in the death of Christ. There is no other death. The price has been paid and that is enough. Scripture said, by one sacrifice, he made perfect once and for all. That's a foundation and stand. Not my fasting. My fasting is a way of getting angry. To use that power. To have received that power in open heaven. To end the plague. It is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So David. David said no. So it starts with what? No. Not to free life. No, today. This season that we are talking about fasting and prayer, 21 days to do. Many people in this congregation, they have excuses. 
They have excuses. They have reason not to fast. So if you are sitting down here 21 days into the year and you have been coming here and you are here about fasting and you have not yet started. Uh, so you, have, you are ready to receive from around free life. Free. People like David. And who is David? The Lord said that your kingdom will last forever. Those who have a future, children that will rule the world, stories that will inspire the world, rulership that transcends a generation, they begin such negotiation with no. He said, take it free. Say, a woman donates herself free. Say, no. A man said, there's no problem. Let's start free. Say, no. But our time is going. Say, I still say no. Ministry these days, people are going into a cult temple to have magical spells to come and mesmerize people in church. And they keep a lot. Some of you, God delivered you from such places. And they feed you with useless miracles that do not stand. And mesmerize you with works that are not from God. Like the magicians of Pharaoh. A priest, somebody. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Philip Jesu, who came and gave us training in Ibom Hall sent a brief video that was forwarded to me by my brother and partner Emmanuel say people inviting him to Illuminati targeting a pastor and a teacher for years that is why, why? because there are so many people claim to be pastors who are patronizing them so they are now going on outreach so when we talk about outreach here, you think it's an insult. Oboni is on outreach. Amok is on outreach. Illuminati, Illuminati, Illuminati outreach. I see a 15-year-old girl. 15-year-old girl says she's been reading on Illuminati for such a long time and she has gotten deep into it. And our deliverance is one of the strangest deliverances we have had in this place. That the demon, demons lived in her and used her as a host. As a host. To destroy everything around them. 15 year old. So on the internet there is an outreach. So if you don't do outreach for souls to be saved. The people you don't bring the gospel to. Will be won by Satan. And they look for your children. In the office you are ashamed. Of offering flyer. And praying for somebody. To be part of God, God of power. And for God to bring salvation. You are ashamed. That person on the day of evil will suggest you go and meet Satan. Many of us who have gone to places and they bathed us naked. People don't just go to do such places. Their friends take them. People, my colleague in the office say, my friend, say that is where I went. I got help. Come on, go and when you go, they say, undress. And you undress. And one demon in the flesh will do a ritual over you. And then after that, you get pregnant. What is the future of that pregnancy? What spirit comes alive in that body? So when we refuse to spread the gospels, reach out, fast and pray for people to be saved, we open the door for Satan to dominate. And if he does not steal you, directly steals from you and steals people around you. This is the time of the church rising. And this is the pleasure I have of hearing people in the different leagues who are beginning to go out for evangelism. Don't do that like you are doing for me. Please don't. I don't need that. Don't do that like you are doing. Don't put me in the picture. I am a servant just like you are. I will be the one who preaches, but it's the Holy Spirit that will touch lives. It's God who will save. Salvation belongs to God. The one you save today is a minus to the problem from the devil. If your children are saved, you have less problem. If your husband is saved, your, your household is saved. If your, if your wife knows God and can pray, you have less issues. We must reach out and we must pray desperately. And I want to use this opportunity to bless God for those who have made sacrifices. Sacrifice. Let me acknowledge it. And after this, we're going to warfare in anointing and all of that.
from the first week that I talked about this, I think two weeks or three weeks have passed. From the first person who has been keeping little money for the self in order to be able to afford a car, who had, and said, ah, this money is not even good enough for a car. Let God use it to preach. Everyone, there is only one person who has sent something to the account that I don't know. Just one person. One and near can also. And the reason I don't want to look for him, because some people go to church, they feel if I give, and pastor knows me, means every day there is anything he will call me. Here I don't call anybody. There are only two people that I know, that if I have need, they know. There are just two people. I have a very small circle. And God has appointed few people around me who anticipate my needs and come through without me talking about it. As for you, I don't go about knowing who sits in my church. I have never. I direct people to God. If you respond to God, He will respond to you. But I just want to let you know that every one of you has sent something. I know you. I know you don't give out of abundance. It is sacrifice. I feel your sacrifice. A couple of people have responded so far. I feel sacrifice. Intentional sacrifice. And I don't go about looking for those people because I know them. They are within my reach. To call to say, thank you for doing this. I don't need to bless you. When Solomon made sacrifice, it is God that came. It's God. It's not the one who was the minister at Gibeon. There were ministers at Gibeon. So there are things you do when it comes to sacrifice. It is between you and the headquarters of grace. So if you have been thinking, oh, why is he not call me and acknowledge? It's too sacrificial for me to be the one to call you. I am asking God to call you. Because it's God that calls Solomon. I just want to let you know that sacrifice is rising. That's why when God told me last year that there will be wealth in this house, I'm seeing people fasting. I'm hearing men and women and the youth who are going out in neighborhoods doing evangelism. That's sacrifice. The heirs of Zion, they come here, apart from the days we have retreat, they come here to pray at least one hour. And in the last week before, before the program, next week, next week, morning, afternoon, night, there will be prayer here. Morning, afternoon, evening, night. So the different leagues prepare. The office, engage, bring our schedule. Yes, come. For those who can drive, connect your friends. Tell people, those in different leagues, know how you come in the 24. Why are we doing all of this? We are making sacrifice for the God of power and might to rise. It is not our sacrifice that will save people. Our sacrifice is a way of taking responsibility. It's making, giving God an altar. Abraham had to give Isaac. God didn't need Isaac. But in giving Isaac, God multiplied Isaac in every generation. And all those who are saved by faith, they are the seed of Abraham, including me. I am a benefit of the sacrifice of Abraham. You cannot sacrifice and your seed will die. And your future will end in shame. Not the God that I know is what. So I want to bless God for every one of you. I want to acknowledge that the spirit of sacrifice has broken out. By the grace of God, since we moved into Goshen, Every day, there are people praying here. Just to let you know. That's what I talked about in Ibom Hall. Since we came in here, groups, sometimes two, three groups are praying. And what are they praying about? They are praying and stirring the fire that God will rise and change life. They are praying for business people amongst us. They are praying for marriages. They are praying for singles. Every day, and it was difficult at the beginning. Because in life, if you cannot pay the price for the vision of God in you, you will expire. So when we started, there was no light. The first complaint is that the first group, oh, the place is dark, mosquito everywhere. I say, go and pray. Whoever mosquito can kill because of praying, let us see. Say, no light. Because of that prayer, we had, Chief is here, we had the first light. That was what? The, the solar. I 
And now, we have a dedicated power that during season like this Christmas, 23 hours of 24 hours of the day, power is constant here. Go around with your many churches, have a church that is enjoying public power with dedicated transformer that is bigger than the transformer of the entire community. Almost twice the size of Sir, it is coming to pray in the night a sacrifice. Coming at the beginning and people complain and say we will not change. Let us go and pray in the night. Let us go and pray in the dark. Let mosquito deal with us. After that, I am not the one who asked for this power. Somebody suggested he said, oh, I have seen dedicated 24 hours or almost 20 hours power. High tension crossing from here to icon. I will want to bring that here. Millions of naira spent. And chief Ben knows the, because he was the, he was the executor. He knows the process. All of that happened because people made sacrifices. Now when they are praying in the night, lights and fans. So no mosquito. Sometimes I come out to pray and then everywhere is whoa, 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 fan. Some people, they don't even need the fan, but I'll keep quiet. Let them, let them lie down. Enjoy the fan that came from prayer. Sir, when we dare to make sacrifice, God is the one to call us. I want to tell you, every one of you, who this season is making sacrifice, my God will call you. Rise to your feet. My God, the God who calls Solomon will call you. And when God places a phone call to you, your life can no longer be private. Lift up your two hands. I dedicate your first fruit. I dedicate your seed. And those who have gone to take what they had kept, sacrifice so far. We have spent money and publicity this year, this month, this week, we are entering into another phase. So more needs are coming up and for the execution. And they saw winning projects in March. So this is an opportunity. I am asking God for one thing. Lift up your two hands. The fast, it begins with the fast. You may not have money to give, but you have the prayer to pray and the fast to offer. Lord, I'm asking this year, of the beginning of understanding of sacrifice. You have told me wealth will break out. Lord, what I'm asking as a minister, let it be wealth at the level of you making phone calls on behalf of somebody. And Lord, for everyone who has made sacrifice intentionally, Lord, this is a, a hard time and you know it. Families are struggling to feed. People are struggling for basic things. What was so long that night at yesterday, maybe so 500 night another day. But people make sacrifice because Lord, it's not me. It is the souls you are the God who saves. And Lord, we ask that every flyer, every billboard is an angel. And a troop of angels. And the feet of our people who go into evangelism wherever. They will not be seen as men. They will be seen as spirits. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Those we speak to about this program. Lord we are making a bonfire. Lord we are building an altar. So that families that are ravished. Families. People in all sorts of issues. Lord, that you will show up and show yourself as the God who saves. In the name of Jesus Christ. May my God make a phone call to you. May my God make a phone call to those who need to remember you. May this season of extraordinary breakout of wealth, may it begin with you. And everyone in this place that God has put something in their hand. But the person who has not yet had understanding, I pray that this week, because it's a week of desperate need, that this week, God will speak to you. Amen. And for everyone who answers to God, God will call you. Amen. In Jesus' name.